Hello everybody, it's Nicholas with GMZ Online, and in today's video we are going to be doing a valve job on a pair of Subaru cylinder heads. That first clip is actually the set I'm doing after this one in the video, but I wanted to show an example of how dirty they are before our first wash through the spray cap. After the first wash, we bake them at 250 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour to dry them out before taping up all of the oil passages so that we can glass bead the outside and the chambers and the ports. This is the best way we've found to clean all of the carbon and grime off of aluminum cylinder heads, but obviously you have to be extremely thorough in your rinsing after the fact to ensure that any and all glass beads are out of the heads. When we're done with the cleaning process, the heads look like a brand new casting, which our customers always love. If you're going to charge a cleaning charge, you better make it worth it. One more rinse in the spray cabinet and I'm ready to move on, so I start checking the valve guides. It doesn't look like much, but the guides are worn out and there's play between my pilot and the guide. Any amount of significant play means that cutting an accurate seat is impossible, so we'll drive out the old guides and replace them with new. My process on aluminum heads consists of trimming the top of the guide flush with the head and drilling a center section out of the guide around three quarters of the way through the guide, leaving a step that we can drive against with the air hammer to remove the valve guide. With the old guides removed, I brush the bores clean. The new valve guides have somewhat of a sharp edge that can pull metal and gall the bores they are installed, so I always polish just this edge so that it is smooth and they can be installed much easier with no damage to the head. It doesn't look like much, but it really does help. Finally, I prep the guides and bores with Goodson Press Fit lubricant and start the guides carefully using a driver with the air hammer. Once the guides are started straight, I have some spacers that I will use as a stop to get the guides driven to the correct installed guide height. I should also probably mention that the intake and exhaust guides are different, so you gotta get them in the right spot. With the new guides in, we can see that the pilot I will be using to cut the seats is no longer loose and is in fact too tight, which is actually good. To get the valve guide to the correct size, I'll be using our diamond valve guide hone to hone the ID of the guide. If my pilot just barely slips in with no extra clearance, I know that we will have the correct valve stem clearance and we'll be able to precisely machine the valve seats. Some people don't understand that if you replace the valve guides, you must machine the valve seat because they must be aligned and exactly concentric to each other. Just for a fun example, I decided to throw some lube on the valve stems and vacuum check the seats before we started. As you can see, the left cylinder would barely pull any vacuum at all and would leak down almost instantly even with lube on the guide. The cylinder on the right pulled a surprising number on the vacuum gauge, but still not enough to justify not cutting the seats. Starting with cutting the intake seats, we're going to be using a three-angle cutting insert, and I'll throw a drawing of the insert up on the screen. When touching up a used valve seat, you have to work with the material you have to a certain extent. For that reason, my goal is to match the current seat to the best of my ability. Too small of a diameter and we'll have to bury the seat to get a full seat width, and too large of a diameter and the seat will extend past the outside diameter of the valve. I cut the first seat and check the location it's contacting the valve face. Being an intake valve, I don't mind pushing closer to the outer edge of the valve, and I can still see color on the outside of the face, meaning I'm in a spot that I like. I like to use these magic markers to put some color on the seats before cutting, which gives a better visual to see what is happening as you're cutting the seats. I'm running the spindle around 180 RPM here, which seems to work well on this seat material and size. I'm sorry for the flickering, but here's some really cool slow-mo shots of what this kind of looks like. You can see here the bottom angle, the seat angle, and a sliver of the top angle towards the end. Now giving a quick glance here, the seats look great, but the cutter used left a nasty edge in the throat of the port, so I went ahead and went back with the second cutter to clean that up and blend in the seat. That looks a whole lot better, so like always, I go ahead and give the valves a vacuum check before moving on. Again, I'm putting a little bit of lube on the valve stem just so that I can get as accurate of an idea of their sealing or not as possible, because if you don't put lube on the valve stem, some of the vacuum will actually slip um, in the clearance between the valve stem and the valve guide. 
As you can see on the cylinder on the left, we are pulling what we consider to be a near-perfect vacuum and have no leaking of the valves, which is a massive improvement from the previous check. Checking the cylinder on the right, and unfortunately I got a bit of a surprise as it would not pull any vacuum. Usually when the seats look nice but they won't vacuum, it's because I had a chip or something between the seat and the valve, leaving the valve partway open. So that's what you see me here checking, you know, trying to make sure everything's clean and testing it again. After several cleanliness checks and still no successful vacuum, I looked a little harder and realized there was one pit left in one of the seats. A quick touch up and dropping a couple valves in, our issue is fixed. The leak down you can see here is between the guide and the valve stem as I did not lube the stem on this check and I'm confident this valve is sealed. This was a perfect example of why I always vacuum check right then and there because sometimes you catch something that you couldn't see visually. With the intake seats finished up, we can level up on the exhaust side. We can definitely make these look and perform better. On the exhaust side, we're in pretty much the same boat, but I'm using a little bit different color. Again, I got my first seat cut, and I wanted to double check where it was contacting the valve face. It was hard to see, but we're pretty much right smack dab in the middle, just like I like it. Again, when I'm cutting the exhaust seats, I'm running my spindle at around the same 180 RPM. Again, as always, we give all the seats a quick vacuum check, and these pass the test as they pulled excellent vacuum even without lubricant on the valve stem. While it wasn't as aggressive as on the intake seat, there was still a ledge at the bottom of the exhaust seat that I came back with the second cutter to blend a little bit better. I absolutely love the way these seats turned out. They look great and they perform great on the vacuum check, so now it's time to get these heads over to the resurfacer. We've got a rollover fixture for surfacing heads that has a cam adjustment for the length direction so we can get the heads leveled up dead nuts before starting our cuts. Before we start surfacing, we run the cutter down by hand until it just touches the head gasket surface. From there, we can run down the depth of our first cut and start the table traversing to make our surface. After two thousandths on the first head, we are almost clean with the exception of a couple spots here. We will take another half thou finish cut and see if it cleans, as the goal is to take as little as possible to make the surface flat. The finish cut took care of that last little bit, so we're going to move on to the other head. And the goal is for it to clean up in under two and a half thou, and after the first one and a half thou, it was close. A second cut brought the second head to the same two and a half thousandths off the surface, and we were clean. With all of our machine work wrapped up, we give the heads one more thorough wash in the spray cabinet, and every hole in passage will be thoroughly rinsed with fresh water before being blown out completely with compressed air. When we're done cleaning, we're 100% confident that every bit of contamination is clear from the heads. This pair of heads came out beautiful. I try not to get too cocky, but I'm really proud of myself on these ones. So with that in mind, the job is almost wrapped up, and all that's left for me to do is assemble these heads. The intake valves were reground, and the customer provided a set of Manly Stainless Race Series exhaust valves. As always when installing the valves, we put a little bit of assembly lube on the valve stems. While we're watching me work on assembling these heads, I wanted to say thank you for watching and remind you that we are not only a machine shop, we're also a worldwide distributor of engine parts. 
We work with various partner warehouses and brands to sell a wide range of engine parts ranging from budget stock to the top of the line quality performance parts. Be sure to check out our website for U.S. shipping and our eBay store for international shipping, which will be linked in the description of this video if you want to support our small business outside of the content we create here on YouTube. Here I'm installing the valve sim seals, and as it turns out, that elusive 10mm socket is the perfect size to aid in pressing those seals into place. Can't forget the shims or locators that go under the valve springs. And if you're anyone who works with these pesky little keepers on these small valve sims, you know how frustrating they can be to install. The best way I've found is getting the head up on our old valve seat machine with a spring compressor adapter in the drill chuck, setting the keepers in place on top of the retainer, and gradually working them into place. You can do three in a row that fall right into place, but the fourth one is going to fight you to the death. As always, the one last check we will do is a vacuum check of each port. And again, we already checked this earlier when we were cutting the seats, but it's just one last check for peace of mind that we finished our job correctly. Thank you all for watching. It really means a lot to us. Don't forget to drop a comment, like, and subscribe to follow our small business journey.